Welcome, very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC Evening News. A 24 million euro boost for regional private sector development. This as the Caribbean Export Development Agency and the European Union initial the 11th European Development Fund. Speaking after a signing of the fund, Prime Minister Fandel Stewart encouraged local and CARICOM private sector companies to take advantage of the market access. As a result of that facilitation, if it's sector to be proactive and creative and to seek to increase the number of projects that can be assisted by Caribbean export to the next stage, what they like to call shovel-ready projects. Countries like Barbados need foreign exchange for almost every stage of our production in the various sectors. But if we do not earn it, we cannot spend it without serious effects on our entire economy and society. Stewart also highlighted some of the benefits which Barbadian companies gained from past installments of the fund. Under the 10th EDF, the CARICOM Export Development Agency has provided export facilitation to over 6,000 firms from our region. I feel sure that you will allow me to briefly make one or two references to the recent export performances of some Barbadian companies as a result of that facilitation. I have been advised that almost 10% of these firms were Barbadian. And to top it all off, a Barbadian company, Wibisco, was named Caribbean Exporter of the Year in 2016. Barbadian firms have benefited significantly from European assistance. Two of the programs which they've cashed in on are the Grant Assistance Program and the European Development Fund. Head of the European Delegation to Barbados and the OECS, Ambassador Daniela Tramasere, explained how the 11th European Development Fund will be used. The 24 million euro committed for this program are intended to build on the achievements of our past private sector development contributions. They have been going as far back as the fifth European Development Fund from the period when, you know, 1980, uh, 1985. The ambassador also explained that Caribbean firms need to be more aware of how they can benefit from the EPA. One of the goals of the EPA is to make the region more productive and more competitive globally while attracting more foreign investments. In short, it is aimed at developing the industries which characterize modern economies. Local authorities have moved to protect Barbadian consumers in the wake of a Brazilian beef scandal that may have resulted in tainted corned beef being imported here. They've already blocked any more of the product from coming in and are now checking to see if some of it has already slipped through. Our Kent Gerson has been following that story and he filed this report. Today, the Veterinary Services Department in the Ministry of Agriculture has been working feverishly to determine if any of the contaminated corn beets out of Brazil is here in Barbados. Now, I've been speaking to Senior Veterinary Officer Dr. Mark Trotman, who's been telling me exactly how they've been going about this. He says they've even been using Barbados' diplomatic connections. Senior Veterinary Officer Dr. Mark Trotman says they became aware of the situation early Monday and first sought to verify the information. The next step was to contact our Foreign Affairs, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, um, who then immediately got in contact with our ambassador to Brazil to get some verification as to what was going on, what was the truth behind it and so on. Now here's what the authorities are yet to find out. What we don't have, and I think that we will get this information, if not by the end of today, by tomorrow, we will have a list of the establishments that have produced the product, the, the contaminated or the adulterated product. But this is what they do know. We know what the major players are. That's been published. We know that there are two major corporations in, in Brazil that export most of the product. And we do know that one of those corporations does export product to Barbados. That has been enough for Dr. Trotman to take some action and offer suggestions. What I do have the authority to do is to implement a temporary ban on the importation of the product, which we have done for the time being. 
um, and I've made a, a recommendation that until we know more, until we know that the products are safe, um, it, and it's a request, it's not, it's not an instruction, um, wholesalers should just hold on to their product and retailers should just withdraw it for the time being. It's a request some retailers are heeding. Now this is where the corned beef would normally be at Massey stores here in Sky Mall, but it's no longer here. We understand from management that since they got word of the controversy yesterday, they removed it all, so it's no longer available for public consumption until they get further word from the authorities. To householders, Dr. Trotman says, don't throw out your corned beef just yet. He says to keep it in your cupboard until his department has identified the specific batches to be discarded and makes that information public. Kent Gerson, CBC News. The National HIV AIDS Commission is focusing on at-risk populations as it strives to eradicate the diseases in Barbados. Let's hear now from Lorna Jones. Strengthening the national response, it is never too late to do it right, is the theme of the National HIV AIDS Commission HIV Research Dissemination Meeting. In line with the National Strategic Plan for HIV Prevention and Control for 2014 to 2018, research results were shared with the aim of guiding national policies. Chairman of the National HIV AIDS Commission, Dr. Alok Kumar says they have seen some major successes in the fight against the disease. We have made huge progress as far as the treatment is concerned, the access of health care to these people, prevention of mother to child transmission, reduction in AIDS related deaths and uh, reducing the uh, incidence of uh, new infections of HIV in Barbados. However, he noted there are segments of our population which are still at an elevated risk for HIV and AIDS. Those key population or populations at risk or those who are marginalized as far as the uh, accessing health care is concerned and that includes several groups like men who have sex with men, commercial sex workers, transgenders as you heard this morning. Uh, they may not be big numbers, it's not the number which is important, but they are just as important a part of the society as anybody else. Masters in Public Health student with the Division of Youth Affairs, Fabian Sargent, highlighted barriers for the transgendered in accessing general health care. Stigma and discrimination exists and was dominant throughout the, the health care system and it impacted both the public and private facilities. Healthcare programs targeting transgender relate to sexual experiences. However, there is a need for a holistic healthcare program. Mr. Sargent says sensitivity training for healthcare providers will encourage an enabling environment for at risk populations to access necessary care. Lorna Jones, CBC News. Well, debate on the 2017 estimates continued in the in the Senate today, and we heard from Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Senator Harry Husbands. He says the benefits of the tough decisions taken by government will not come overnight. He says the country continues to face penalties like downgrades as a result. Well, despite this, he says Barbadians are key to the island's success, and the necessary investments must be made. It is not going to drop from heaven. It will come through investment. That is the issue about the about expansion as well of the airport. People say, no, why, why are you spending $200 million on an airport where you can build a hospital? But you won't even be able to afford a hospital if you have an airport to accommodate the tourists that come into Barbados. It's so, so, as the young people, especially Americans, but it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. That is what all of this that we are going through is about. Senator Husbands says efforts are on to resolve the outstanding debt with the University of the West Indies. Now, as it relates to tertiary education, he says there's not enough space for students applying to the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic and the Barbados Community College, particularly the Hospitality Institute. The number of qualified people that we have to turn back because we don't have the space. Again, the minister and I, we go up there, we have the plans. We have the plans, we have the building plans. We went up there to lunch. 
uh, one day, as you know, the Pomeranian is not running its, its uh, program. I, I would advise, I would advise all of you to go to lunch or dinner or there. Very good movie. Very good, very rewarding experience. We go up there and we stand up again, look at the area, talk about the plans. But the money doesn't exist and it hurts. That, that, that is the challenge we face in tertiary education. Barbados needs to have a national conversation on how certain services will be delivered in the future. And that's because government cannot afford to continue borrowing money to pay for them. This is the view of Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Senator Darcy Boyce. He believes another mechanism has to be found to fund upgrades to, for example, the island's water and road infrastructure. You don't have any choice. Somebody has to pay for it. And therefore, we're going to have to re relook the way in which it is done, the way in which it is managed, the way in which people are incentivized to pay the bills on it. Madam President, the roads have to get, have to get fixed. Government is not going to be able to continue to borrow so much to fix the roads. We have to find a way that people share some of those costs. Independent Senator Alwyn Adams believes a more active approach to education is the way forward for Barbados. Our ad education um, authorities should begin to move away from a system whereby the more gifted of our students are kind of hived off, are creamed off, and sent to the grammar type school, while the other students that are not doing so well are sent to the newer secondary schools. And Government Senator Reverend Dr. David Durant has a solution of sorts to address the present nursing shortage. He wants consideration be given to setting up a college focusing on nursing and midwifery. To have something that we call an institution called the Barbados Nursing and Midwifery College, you know, offering masters and even something like what we have, the, the system we have in Jamaica, UTEC, University of Technology, where they are offering so much, so many degrees and the nurses are coming out there really, really well trained and they are being bonded of course and then we find that since there's a shortage of nurses um, in the major countries, they are coming and they're paying to unbond them. In other news now, the Ministry of Transport and Works is deeply concerned that Barbados has recorded 13 road fatalities in just two and a half months into 2017. It is offering its deepest condolences to the families of those who have been affected. The ministry is urging all road users, whether they are drivers, passengers or cyclists, to exercise greater con caution on the roads. It insists that many accidents are caused by inappropriate speed for the road conditions, refusal to wear a seat belt or use of child restraint, driving while under the influence of alcohol or other drugs, bad judgment, and generally driving without due care and attention. We'll have more news for you just after this break. Stay with us. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbit is as fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. Need affordable motor insurance? Get up to 30% off plus additional discounts for new and used vehicles. Call 436-6200 or log on to beacon.co.tt. Where you need us, when you need us. Hello friends, this is Jeff Shepard inviting you to join us every Thursday from 6 to 7 on QFM for Nichols Bacon Inc. Manor. 
Always Fresh. Friday, March 31st, give me soca, back and out on the beach, it's gonna be crazy. Boom, and I'm gonna be there. Freaky girl, that we love. Y'all been on, you ting on fire. Boom, boom, you ting on fire. Y'all been on, you ting on fire. Freaky girl, give me soca, back and out on the beach, I'm gonna be there. Crazy. 98.1 The One is a proud sponsor of Gimme Soca. Political activist David Komishong has officially challenged the construction of the Hyatt Hotel. Around 1 this afternoon, the president of the Clement Payne movement objected to the permission given by Prime Minister Fundell Stewart to begin construction of the proposed 15-story hotel on Bay Street. He registered the fixed-date claim forms and supporting affidavits at the Supreme Court. Mr. Komishong insists the law must be upheld. If the rules and regulations say that you must hold at least one town hall meeting to have consultation with the people of Barbados, particularly the residents of the nearby communities, then that must apply to all citizens. If the rules say that a hotel should be no more than seven stories, and if developers in the past have applied and they um, for structures in excess of seven stories and have been told that the regulation is no more than seven stories and that must apply to everybody. The number of inmates in Her Majesty's prison dodged with mental health issues is posing some challenges for officials. This was revealed by Director of the Criminal Justice Research and Planning Unit, Cheryl Willoughby. You know, we have so many inmates at prison who have made the health problems that prison officers cannot deal with. But they commit crimes, so they're sent to the, the prison. They need to be incarcerated because of the nature of the crime they would have committed. But I am not sure that they are trained to deal with persons with mental health issues. And if we really do some social inquiry into the lives of our children, we will recognize that some of the behaviors that we determine are deviant or out of character. Some of these children have learning disabilities and some of them have mental health challenges. And these are not being easily picked up. Ms. Willoughby wants people to do away with the notion that most people incarcerated for marijuana are locked up for having spliffs. Over 98% of the persons who are charged for a spliff, they get community service or they are worked with by social workers. We now have a drug treatment court. We've evaluated, Madupe evaluated the, the pilot of it, and more work is being done in the area of rehabilitation. So no one is incarcerating persons who are found with a spliff. The medical model is being applied to persons who are at risk, but you would find that those persons who are actually given sentences for marijuana, they either have outstanding warrants, they are either on bail, or they were charged for trafficking, or possession near a school or something more serious. On World Water Day, with the theme, Why Waste Water, CBC is getting the latest information regarding the upgrade to the South Coast Treatment Plant. The Barbados Water Authority has been working to address sewage problems affecting residents and businesses collect connected to the plant since those problems emerged in December after heavy downpours. Now, those problems were related to equipment failure at the plant. But news is that replacements needed to fix the pumps at the facility are now on island and will be installed in short order. And joining us live now with the very latest is the head of the BWA's Wastewater Division, Patricia Innes. Ms. Innes, thank you so much for joining us this thank evening. Thank you for having me. So let's get straight down to, to the issue. What's in the pipeline now for the South Coast Sewage Plant? Yes, yeah, but as you just um, explained we had in January after the the crisis and the problems identified three general areas of attack mm 
Uh, one, as it related to the sewer networks coming into the plants and in essence cleaning them and making sure that they're always clean and we've been done doing a lot of work in that regard. We'll shortly be hopefully sending out information to Barbadians on the fog, on the flushing, sewer flushing um, schedules. With regard to the plant, which was the second pound of attack, we have been working to do a lot of upgrades. We're thankful for the support of the BTI and those Barbadians and all who have a buy-in to it. We get a lot of calls from businesses. There's never an area of contention. Um, persons realize that it is a, a joint um, job to fix the problem. Um, we will be, thankfully, uh, be able to let Barbadians know exactly what we're doing with regard to the pumps. The effluent pumps at the South Coast was a, a source of big concern. Uh, we have been prepping for the entire week, Saturdays and Sundays, so that hopefully in another week, it's not all under our control, that is at the Barbados Water Authority, but in another week we'll be able to tell Barbadians and explain to them what is happening. We are intending to have as minimum disruption to the service. There are ways in which there, that can be done, but to let Barbados know what we are doing at the time. And then the third point of the attack was to be cleaning the outfalls. We have successfully completed that. All of our outfalls are excellently clean. Kudos to all the divers who helped, who went beyond the call of duty and saw it as a personal um, contribution to the, to the efforts. So, so those were the three areas. Maintenance and maintaining that is also important because Barbadians, we have ex increased uh, our load. The load has been increasing. We are almost at the maximum at both plants of the load that the plants could take. So therefore, we have to look at, in essence, the future. Mm -hmm. Even with the issues that arose in December, our plan and our strategies were not only in the fixing, but what do we have to do in the future. Right. So the idea of reuse, uh, recycling, and reusing uh, water, wastewater, why wastewater, is coming on board okay. because we have to be able to alert Barbados to that. Now, I understand that there's going to be a major PR campaign to get some more buy-in from the residents yes. and the business owners, but it appears as though they themselves in, in the way that they dispose and they use the system, they're contributing to the problem. What can you tell us about that? Significantly, and this is why we, we are uh, intensifying a, a fog control. This is not a term that we devise. This is a national term. Fast oil and grease are destroying our sewer lines. Mm -hmm. um, and this is why we wanted to, especially on World Water Day, explain that reality. The Barbados Water Authority, our sewer systems cannot take this continuous increase of fogs. It clogs our networks, and this is why we have excessive amounts of work. It destroys and damages our pumps and all of our sewage system. So we are starting a, a fog control program actually intensifying on um, next, next week. Mm -hmm. The Environmental Protection Department within their work is also joining, even though they're doing on a separate area. The Ministry of Health has helped significantly. We have had buy-in from a number of persons. So the, the education is to let Barbados know there are things they're not supposed to do as yeah. it relates to the sewer networks. Mm -hmm. um, we are therefore asking all Barbadians to be their neighbors keepers as well as to police themselves and yeah. to police others. A number of items should not be going into the sewer networks and we therefore are sending out we are within the program we will be giving out booklets uh, it will be online and a number of other areas to let Barbadians understand that we need to control the fats oil and greases which are destroying our networks does this also apply to the Bridgetown sewage plant most as well? definitely okay most definitely yeah all right and um, well we, we have to wrap up but I just wanted yes. to know is the theme why waste water is that in sync with the um, BWA's objectives most definitely at this time? yeah it is absolutely in sync, and uh, we are, in essence, doing our part, or trying to do our part to help educate Barbadians on what not to do, mm -hmm. emphasis on what to do, so that as we start the program, we will, of course, let you know of the legal repercussions, to of, 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 of course, we're not looking at that area, mm -hmm. but we have to understand we are all contributing, we need to all realize that we have a part to play in making sure our sewer networks and our uh, development going forward as we look to intensify, as we have larger um, companies, larger businesses mm -hmm. adding to the sewer network, that we need to be able to protect it, hence we'll be working to in that regard. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. Patricia. And it's the Barbados Water Authority's manager of wastewater. And of course, we'll keep you updated on that as more information comes to hand. Our students from at least one local school have the knowledge necessary to protect themselves in the event of a that a tsunami comes to our shores. A team from the Department of Emergency Management visited the Alma Paris School to help conduct a tsunami drill as part of the annual Carib Wave exercise. Officials stayed in the District E police station next door while the alarm went off inside of the school. Our principal Valdez Francis says this was in order to maintain the element of surprise. 
they did remarkably well. They behaved themselves well on the road. They conducted themselves well. And um, it was, uh, we, I believe, it's a total success. Mm -hmm. So once, and if we keep pushing down our times, even if we had a local situation from what we've heard from the, the experts, that it would take about 15 minutes um, uh, as a safe time. And if we are down under, uh, from 10 to 14, we are still in the ballpark. The acting deputy director of the Department of Emergency Management, Captain Robert Harewood, says part of the organization's mandate involves ensuring the vulnerable in society are well taken care of during disasters. And although they haven't taken the drill to every school in Barbados, they continue to ensure the necessary information needed to survive tsunamis gets out. People know they're supposed to get to high ground as quickly as possible. So I'm confident that the, the schools will evacuate. We've been doing this career for, this is about uh, 10 years now. And, and every year we try to involve some aspect of evacuation. But apart from that, we do have a, 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 a pretty robust uh, information campaign. Still to come, an update on that explosion at the quarry in St. Lucia. That and more stories from the region after this break.